Here's an idea. Even algorithms can't save Facebook from the bias of reporting the news. In case you missed the news because it wasn't trending on Facebook, Facebook's trending news team has been in the news. Not long ago, the whole department got the ax after Gizmodo reported that they'd been suppressing conservative news items and sources. This caused a stir, and perhaps rightfully so. Facebook is used by all stripes of people with all manner of beliefs and politics. It's where those people go to get their news. Writing for the New York Times, Farhad Manju described Facebook as the world's most influential source of news according to every available measure of size. And it would be dismaying, to say the least, to learn that your news source suppresses topics most important to you. Also dismaying because Facebook can actually sway public opinion. Enough people use Facebook and Facebook is good enough at directing user experience that it is as, if not more capable than a standard news outlet or the oatmeal when it comes to moving the needle on public perception. I attribute Sir Rauch's popularity significantly to Matthew Inman. So, but okay, a timeline. In early May, Gizmodo posts their expose and Facebook denies the presence of bias. The Senate Commerce Committee then demands insight into Facebook's editorial system and wants a list of the news sources removed or blocked from trending. On August 26th, Facebook announces its trending news team would be axed and that the trending algorithm would be significantly more, though not entirely, algorithmic. On August 29th, an article incorrectly claiming Fox News contributor Megyn Kelly was fired for secretly supporting Hillary Clinton trends, and the trending news topics continue to be a shadow of their former usefulness, let's say. On August 30th, Digiday posts an interview with an anonymous former Facebook trending news editor who confirms that their team, like much of Silicon Valley, was left-leaning, and that though they were a news team in name, there was very little editorial oversight until Facebook got called out. In their words, it never seemed like anyone in the company ever actually understood what we did or understood how the topics were curated. Now it's very easy to understand. Robot brains. In light of this whole thing, there are then two questions that I wanna ask. The first is, why is there an expectation that Facebook have zero bias? And second, what does Facebook do in light of that expectation? Right off the bat, we should talk about a thing that we've already talked about. The expectation that any news source will be free from bias is an unfair one. In the past, we've quoted Glenn Greenwald, who has said that there's no such thing as neutrality, only transparency. Journalist and professor Jay Rosen talks about how the view from nowhere, the capability to report on events without personal inclination, is mythological. Neutrality and the view from nowhere are vestiges of a traditionally positivistic approach to journalism, which we learn over and over again is too high an ideal for mere modern mortals. And this is just as true for what Facebook does, aggregation, curation, editorial, publishing, as it is for literal on the ground reporting done by people. Miss, for a dollar, can you believe this is Blake Lively without makeup? No, she looks good. Okay, so. The first source of an expectation that Facebook itself is unbiased is probably the fact that news feeds are populated by friends. Yes, there is a small cadre of contrarians in everyone's feed, but for the most part, and Facebook understands this, so they design for it, Facebook is for seeing things you like, things that you agree with, things that you are entertained by. That's why the contrarians are so frustrating. They ruin Facebook. The idea here is that Facebook mostly shows things which align with one's worldview because, hey, you are the editorial director of your friendships. And Facebook is the positive reaction skewing editorial director of your friendships on Facebook. So one may start to think of Facebook as unbiased because on two levels, it works to show things that align with one's own bias. That's how ideology functions. The complete absence of tingle is how you know it's working. The trending news pane is a little different though. That purports to show topics that a large number of people are sharing and talking about. If you're conservative and you discover that that's not exactly the case, well, then that's grist for the theory mill. The theory that the mainstream media colludes to silence or at least not spotlight your viewpoints because the liberal elite is in your internet messing with your hashtags which is exactly what happened. But also, I mean, this is a thing that's widely understood about publishers and news organizations, that they have politics. Facebook trafficking in slant is no different from the rest of the news media. 
It may not have the same editorial oversights and standards as other news giants, and that is a lamentable problem, but just like where there's smoke, there's fire, where there's editorial, there's partiality. And that is true even when the editorial is guided by code. No one is hanging other major news publishers out to dry for their preferences because, duh, people have preferences, but is Facebook people? It's a weird question to ask, but before this debacle, there was not widespread understanding that Facebook does or even could have bias. Arguably, even Facebook didn't understand. Why? Because algorithms, I think. Facebook is a technology product run by algorithms. What's an algorithm? Well, it's not a person, that's for sure. It's the result of programming and computation and fundamentally, dispassion but also not. Insofar as data collected about the world contains and reflects bias, which it almost certainly does, algorithms that operate on that data will also contain and reflect bias. This is true down to data sets as seemingly neutral as whole languages. Source. For real. It's like a, it's a recent study. You should read it. The practice of thinking that because a technological operation based on data has transpired, its result must be free of bias is something former Kickstarter VP of data Fred Benenson has described as math washing. Quote, using math terms, algorithm, model, etc., to paper over a more subjective reality. Algorithm and data-driven products will always reflect the design choices of the humans who built them, Benenson said, and it's irresponsible to assume otherwise. Basically, where we may understand news publishers and newsrooms and reporters to have bias because they're people, for better or worse, computers acting autonomously with algorithms and models are often thought to have none, even though that is demonstrably not the case. Sources. So many so endless sources, an embarrassment of sources. They're all good. Read them all. Even trending, which sounds like it should be really simple, like, oh, it's just popular. That is a complicated thing. You know what's always trending? Weather. Lunch. Right off the bat, editorial is required unless you want hashtag lunch in your face all day every day. It's also in the economic interest of publishers to catch things as, if not before, they trend so that they can ride the wave of eyeballs and clicks, which means trending is often not a fact, but a forecast, and we all know the reputation forecasts have. For a lot of people, though, this is exactly the value of trending items. It's not what is, but what will be popular, because being ahead of the curve is cool. Also, are trends in an area or worldwide? Are they sorted by language? Facebook is a global service, so pure trending topics would likely never be in just your native tongue. A mistaken perception that algorithms just get it done causes flabbergastery when human involvement in trending topics, which is the norm from the get-go, is reported on in connection with editorial politics, a thing which is inseparable from every form of news, even if it's just curation, even if it's algorithmic curation. As sociologist Zainab Tufekci said to the Wall Street Journal, choosing what to highlight in the trending section, whether by algorithm or humans, is an editorial process. Facebook is in a get you a man who can do both territory, except on a double access. Algorithmically powered social connection and news provision for any given person along the political spectrum. This is tough for a thousand reasons. The political climate in general, the political climate of the tech sector, political discourse online, ongoing social media design problems, but it would seem also Facebook itself. Despite somehow becoming a media giant, a publisher and aggregator of content and news and stories, they simply don't seem to have or be interested in strong editorial standards and practices. Perhaps because of a view that algorithms make those things unnecessary. Well, it would seem in fact that algorithms may make them more necessary. Georgia Wells for the Wall Street Journal points out, in recent days, the trending lists have appeared more flawed than when humans were in charge. There have been false stories, misidentified keywords, and celebrity gossip in the place of more serious news. So what's Facebook's response here? They could develop an ecumenical, politically diverse, if not divergent newsroom or newsrooms. Abandon the fairy tale of algorithmic objectivity, even as it relates to trending, and just focus on coverage. But can they? Will they? The trending editor that spoke with Digiday guessed that trending news would probably just be shut down entirely. Maybe not because it doesn't work, but because it can't. What do y'all think? Why is there an expectation that Facebook be unbiased and is it possible for Facebook to meet that expectation? And if so, 
Wow. Let us know in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding first. If you want to watch that one, you can click here or find a link in the doobly-doo. One small bit of news, next week on the 22nd here in New York City, PBS Digital Studios is going to be hosting a nerd night at the YouTube space where I'm going to be giving a talk and Johansson's going to be giving a talk and Sarah from the art assignment and everybody's going to be there talking about stuff that they're interested in. So we'll put a link to that in the doobly-doo. It is a free event. It is 18 plus. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll see you there. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit links in the doobly-doo and the tweet of the week comes from Nathan Scott who points us towards an article about Twitch chat beating a chess grandmaster, which is very related to the stuff I'm going to be talking about at Nerd Night. And last but certainly not least, this week's episode would not have been possible or good without these human editors.